All right, welcome to episode six of Is This a Podcast? I'm here today with comedian Bex, and she's going to tell me a little bit about herself. So, uh, Bex, you're from Sacramento? No. Original? No, you're not <laughs> from Sacramento. Um, I'm from San Diego. I also use the pronouns they, he. Um, oh, sorry. I no, apologize. No, no. I did not you know. You just I'm sorry. were strangers. <laughs> um, I'm from San Diego, and I moved here for school. So, I live in Davis currently. Oh, okay. Um, so, I started school, like, 2015. Um, and I dropped out like three times. Um, <laughs> so now I'm going to finish in the summer. <laughs> oh. I say with a hopeful wink in my eye. Oh, you'll do it. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah I took one year of college and after that year I was like, ah, oh, you know what? This isn't for me. And then worked in factories for like still, but now I found comedy and you know, this is what I'm passionate about. So I yeah. just look at it, do the things that I have to do to do what I love. What's stupid is I went to school for comedy. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's like I, yeah, so in high school, I did speech and debate. Mm -hmm. I was like a huge nerd. Like a huge nerd. <laughs> awesome. Um, and I got like really, really good at it. I have like a natural competitive spirit. Mm -hmm. Um it's probably insecurity is like another word for competitiveness yeah right? it's like you just want to feel like you're better than everyone else at something arbitrary something you can just practice in your room alone yeah. instead of hanging out with your friends um so that's what i did <laughs> 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 to build my insecurity oh. um, no so i was like what do i do to fill this void uh and i thought about what i liked uh about speech and debate and it was like mm -hmm. being in front of people and sometimes i can make them laugh and that was way better than making like a dramatic point yeah in my mind like it was just like uh more more fun which i thought was just more of the point of like existence than like telling oh. each other what our theories of life was, you know? Yeah, I, I, like you I'm, can do that in a comedic way, where it's yeah. like, I still kind of don't know, but like, this is kind of what I think. Um, and it's less douchey. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> what, what you said about fun, yeah, that's really what life's all about, having fun and trying to do things, the things that make you happy. Now, you said you were, you were in school, and then what were you trying to get a degree for again? Oh, yeah. Um, Communications. Communications. Now, yeah. what type of, like, radio, stuff like that? Um, so, I was, I said I was going to be, like, my own agent, uh -huh. pretty much. Okay. So, I wanted to learn how to be my own agent and market myself. Uh-huh. Um, and I was pretty smart from, like, being such a nerdy debate kid. So, I got into Davis, and I was like, I might as well get a, a whatever good degree. And I had a minor in theater um which helped too and then i started my own improv team and i started my own stand-up oh. club oh that's cool um, yeah so they're still running the stand-up club is doing amazing like over 200 people per show oh wow um, that's awesome it's, it's pretty crazy yeah hell yeah now how often do you do shows with your stand-up club um if i'm there i'll do them um I don't really do stand up as much anymore. I have like, yeah, still a lot of insecurity and anxiety. Yeah. So if I can't control the room, I uh -huh. like, I kind of panic. So I don't do open mics, but like I throw my own open mics, okay. which I feel like is kind of weird. Like I did a show before I did an open mic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I've actually, I, I worked with someone at the art museum who had not done an open mic and got on a show at Last Unlimited. I'm like, wow, you, you did yeah. that without having to do one open mic. That's, that's good. I mean, and they're, they're funny. Yeah. But yeah. I'm just like, I, I did like a lot of open mics when I started and I finally got a show at Punchline with like Stay Silly, but you know, that's I've just one show. I produced the show at Punchline. 
Oh, <laughs> what was the what was the show that you produced? Um, so I was an intern for Live Nation, uh-huh. and they were like, "Hey, do you want to produce a show?" Um, and they wanted it to be experimental, something mm-hmm. they'd never done before. They were like, "We want it to be like the drag brunch that uh-huh. we do." And yeah. I think they like hired me because I was like, "Yeah, I'm they them like." Yeah. You know, um, fancy haircut and cool clothes and whatever. Yeah. Um, so they were like, we want you to do something experimental. <laughs> um, <laughs> experimental. Sure. Like with bears um, and chainsaws and unicycles. <laughs> no. I did clown burlesque. <laughs> So oh. I was like, fine, fuck it. And like, <laughs> I'll bring all my friends to like strip and like juggle and like. <laughs> that's like, what we did. That like burlesque and stuff like that. That's one thing about the Crocker. They used to have the art mixes and the burlesque mm-hmm. shows. It's always it was. That's cool, cool to see that. Like, w- one of the weirdest things I've ever heard hands down at the Crocker. Like, I never expected to see as many naked people at art museum. Yes. But I was on the first floor of the museum one day and they were having an event and they had the studios converted into like dressing rooms and I'm around the corner and mm-hmm. I hear this girl go say, I should have had you check my butthole for toilet paper. <laughs> and I'm like, hold on a second. And I, I walk around the corner and this girl's standing there like naked, but she's painted like blue because they were doing body painting. And I was just like, oh, it makes sense now. But not seeing them and just hearing them say that, I'm like, what's going on over there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Um, yeah, the green room we had was maybe the size of a closet. Mm-hmm. And I had like six people performing and also like four comedians for mm-hmm. in between. So it was like four normally dressed comedians. <laughs> like, <laughs> zigzag like weaved in between these like naked glittery bodies <laughs> and they That's... were just like yeah all comedians are like weirdos so oh yeah was, definitely i, I know i'm i am uh, normal sucks normal's not cool <laughs> i don't trust people that are normal because i'm just like what do you know that i don't know normal person but now other than school do you do you do anything other than school or is that all you're doing now do you have a job or you do anything like that um i was working at the zoo um oh the yeah. zoo that's freaking awesome yeah <laughs> it it really was um like during my breaks i could go see the lion training and <sighs> stuff like that like they would like knock and be like hey the lion training is happening go take your that break and go watch is, it. that is yeah. so cool it's like, very fun yeah oh um, man yeah and it's opening back up pretty soon i literally just got the call today that's cool so you get to see animals every day like frick that is oh my god i'm jealous (laughs) i am like like (laughs) whoa that's so cool yeah like you don't think about how freaking cool animals are like wild i would be so stoked to go to work yeah it is really fun. Are they still hiring? <laughs> <laughs> I think so. Oh wow! I would uh, I'd go um, mess with some animals. I just feel like some, not a weird Joe Exotic way. <laughs> and it's all like kids. There's not really a lot of like just adults that come. It's usually like they bring their kids. If it's adults, it's like cool yeah. people that are like legitimately. Ex- it's not like Disney weirdos, you know? Yeah, people that are like actually interested in animals and like. Yeah. yeah I they love have, like, learning. Cameras and yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's like a very tame crowd, which is like e- so easy to entertain people who come to, yeah, want to have a good time. I guess that's a lot like comedy, where it's just yeah. like we're all on the same page. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. So, unless you're like in a sour mood or you're like yeah too normal of a person where like performing gives you a weird vibe you know yeah um then comedy can be really easy yeah Yeah. high school what was that like i like asking people high school is one of those times you know you learn a lot and it's not even what you learn in high school high school is more about like the interaction between your kids of that age i guess i don't know because i didn't learn much in high school like all the shit i learned in high school i've not used at all none of it (laughs) (laughs) yeah i can't remember 
anything about my classes except for like turning and whispering to someone, you know? Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah. N n nothing but interactions. Uh, like I remember someone took my chapstick and rolled it all the way up and bit it and took it <laughs> back and squished it back. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then they gave it back. <laughs> and gave it back to me. And someone else pulled my shirt and got a hole punch and punched three holes into my shirt. Teenagers are fucking crazy. They're just yeah, uh, weird and impulsive. And oh yeah, they, 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 so they're they were still still mean, I guess. Because yeah, I was a yeah. nerd. I mean, oh, I, also, I like, wasn't. I'm cute. I wasn't popular. So if you like a nerd, you know, you don't know how the fuck to act except mean to them. So, right? I, I, You're like. Shut I don't know. I, I didn't really I got picked on in high school. I'm not afraid to say it cuz I don't know. I don't know why people picked on me. I guess I just have one of those faces. <laughs> 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 it's like let's pick on that guy. You know what it is is that you have audacity. Then I grew a beard. Nobody nobody messed with me when I grew a beard. <laughs> See, it's, the, it's the audacity right there. It's like people, kids are insecure, so they want to pick on you because oh, you're yeah. slightly secure. I don't know. I don't know how secure I was, but I know that they like, it was just, I don't know if that was everywhere, but yeah, kids were always mean. So I just wanted to check and make sure that still held true. But yeah, how oh, yeah. old are you? I'm um, 23. 23. Mm -hmm. It's like the Blink 182 song. No one likes you when you're 23, huh? I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, oh, now that we <laughs> quoted what old. If I just started sobbing, seriously. <laughs> oh, that'd be fucked up. I would feel kind of bad. I'd be like, oh, wow. I'd be like, are you acting? Please tell me that you're not acting. Okay, so. High yeah, school. I was a huge thing. nerd. I didn't trip or anything. No one thought to offer me drugs because they probably thought I would like narc on them. Yeah. Um, Speaking like, of which, yeah, but. that's actually the next thing I wanted to segue into. That now that you brought it up, have you had any experiences? I know you're young. You're 23. Mm -hmm. You probably couldn't have had that many crazy experiences with drugs and one i wouldn't think you don't look like the type <laughs> personally that i'm sorry to assume something like that but you know i still look like a nerd um, <laughs> what, are, what what does a nerd look like uh they have these cheeks that go <laughs> way up here suspiciously high cheeks oh. um you know i've uh like out of rebellion to the nerd identity mm -hmm. the moment i got to college i became a huge stoner um i got caught smoking in the dorms twice oh wow uh, <laughs> and uh my ra was super cool it was like some bitch ass like other dorm people that uh -huh. called the cops on me but my ra like came into my room and like hugged me and told me to like get my medicine and like it's like too cool of an ra i think oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah cool but also suspicious um yeah but so I, don't they, know. I guess they don't allow smoking in the dorm even though it's legal in the state yeah i had my medical rec Oh, so, so you did yeah. have your medical wreck, so it was, yeah. it was okay. That's why they were it. saying that. Um, uh. But it's like, school is federal property. Um, or like, at least my school is. Um, okay. And that's so, that UC Davis? Yeah. Okay. Um, but I've done so many drugs on that campus. <laughs> <I've>, <laughs> like oh, every, probably every drug you can, you can name. Because what's I your, also what? What's your craziest drug story? Just crazy experience uh, you've had while while doing drugs. Um, I don't know. I went to a rave and I took acid and Molly. Oh right? wow! And um, I went with a 
like three friends. We road mm -hmm. tripped from Sacramento down to Los Angeles for this rave. Uh huh. Right. And, um, yeah, we all took a, something different and there was a bouncy castle in the middle of this rave. Uh, and yeah, I started tripping right in the middle of it. I can't remember a lot, but by the end I like was on stage dancing and, um, I saw my friends like looking at me, like cheering me on. Like it was kind of a, you know, yeah, a little bit private to be on stage. So it was like a big deal to get. Yeah. On. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, I was started like spinning out and I, I ran to the bathroom and I vomited and it was like green leaves that I vomited. I had no idea. What? You, I, like, <laughs> like, did I eat bay like, leaves? leaves? I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. That's weird. It's like I ate salvia or something. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck I was doing in between the bouncy castle and like <laughs> the stage. I also remember like some dude was having a panic attack and I was just in such zen mode that I like grabbed him and like made him focus and like taught him about uh, life in a just state. calmed him down. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> now I've I've did acid and ecstasy but never did both together. But fun. I could imagine that I don't know, I know ecstasy makes you feel really good. But the next day's hell. Next day's bad. But while you're mm -hmm. on it yeah, it's like in touch with like everybody's feelings, like, you know, feeling other people's feelings. Like I know I had a time, like I was around somebody and I was like, you're mad. And they're like, no, I'm not. I'm like, no, you're mad. I can tell you're <laughs> mad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like that, that's, uh, that's how, how I was like, I don't know. You feel in tune with everyone's like repress feelings. Yeah. You, you want to get them out. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're like, speak the truth. Come on. And, and it feels good <laughs> when people blow in your face. Because <laughs> that, that very the same night, this oh. girl found out. She's just like, it's like, oh, really? You're you're rolling? I was like, yeah. And she comes up and like rubs my face and then blows in it. And I'm just like, ah. Uh, yeah. 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 So I, I'm a raver. Yeah. So okay. I've done lots of Lots, lots of, of psychedelics. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and I just like. Up. I like the the artist philosopher identity, so yeah. I microdose a lot. Um, okay, I hear you. And just like I don't, I'm not the type to lose control really when yeah. I'm on drugs. I'm like more in tune with myself, really. Um, and I, it scares me to be with people who do freak out on drugs. Like my first rave, I was with a new boyfriend. Yeah. And um. We were seeing Skrillex. I had no idea he was there. <laughs> but then Skrillex came on. Yeah. I was like, this is corny. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, like, I was doing Molly for my very first time and my uh -huh. very first, like, big rave. Yeah. Um, and we all, you know, my group of friends took it at the same time. Uh, I, like, lost myself in dance. Like, was looking around 10 minutes later. Uh, my boyfriend was gone. Like three hours later, he comes back with a ripped shirt, and he talks about like he was talking about massaging some dude. What? <laughs> <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> oh. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Just <laughs> oh man. <laughs> More about him massaging the dude. I'm intrigued. What what happened? What was he, he was like? He did. He was describing it. He was like, we were in the front, and like, you know, we were all just bouncing, and like, I started touching him, and he was like closing his eyes and leaning into it, and he was sweaty, and it felt good. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, um, that's funny. But yeah, that's why I don't hang out with that kind of. <laughs> high that person that's just like let me get lost and like oh yeah you know i don't know um, i've been i've been told when i'm on mushrooms i'm a bit much to be around sometimes <laughs> and then one of my friends like you're like willy Wonka in the tunnel and i'm like 
<laughs> that, That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're like Willy Wonka in the tunnel. <laughs> I'm going to have to watch Willy Wonka again probably to get that get that reference. No I mean, one I know knows what... where we're rowing. No one knows where we're going. <laughs> you're like, yeah, talking about your career, actually. <laughs> like, dude, um, be real. That was good talk on some some drug trips. I, I enjoyed that very much. Now I, you're you're young, like, again as I've said before. But there's no, no age has nothing to do with life experiences and all that. True. I like to do a section about poor life choices or just you know something that may have changed your life dramatically or something like mm -hmm. that you know what i mean and you had said something before i started recording that was very i i that piqued my interest if you want to talk sure. about that what Is, you said something about a flood oh yeah i mean if it's not something that you that's too traumatic or anything like no. that like you, you said something about it i'm like that that's that interests me so let, let me let me hear about that yeah, it was just weird. Um, let me know if I talk too fast, too. When I get really into my stories, I get real motor mouth. But um, let me see. So I moved to France, was part of one of my dropouts, dropout experiences. Um, so I lived on a vineyard type thing for three months. Um, and it was maybe like 10 feet away from a river. Uh, side note, I shit in this river on the second day that I lived in France. <laughs> um, <laughs> Do they not um, have bathrooms in France? <laughs> they didn't have spare keys um, <laughs> to the fucking house that I lived in. So when oh. I went on a bike ride, like, everyone left the house and locked me out and uh, uh -huh. I came back and you know classic uh, classics the, the, the rest old tale. is history the rest is history okay. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so uh <laughs> that river took revenge <laughs> 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 oh apparently <but> fuck <laughs> I never thought about that sequence of events like that <laughs> <laughs> um yeah like uh so the people in the house that i'm talking about is uh one other tourist person who was working on the vineyard they'd yeah. left like maybe after a couple days and a host who's like a 60 year old english man who's like yeah. near death and he's like going to the doctor like every day uh -huh. um, and He's pretty rich. He's, like, open about how he was, like, scheming as a businessman. He was like, oh, yeah, I'll give you this deal for 1300 And then would be like, okay, he took the deal for 1100 And, like... <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> he was hella rich. He had, like, three cars, a vineyard, like, yeah, um, tractor, all that shit. Yeah. Uh, and he was also a hoarder. Um, so the whole bottom floor of the house, like three rooms, were stuffed with like random shit. He would go shopping all the time and like just stuff it with random shit. And um, so a month in, uh, he went to the doctor about like 5 a.m. Uh, he came back like 8 a.m. Uh huh. Uh, I woke up maybe like seven and a flood happened like, yeah, five, six a.m. Yeah. So he left right before the flood. I woke up, saw all his shit destroyed. You know, it went up like five feet maybe. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so like 12 people were killed because they were sleeping on the bottom floor. Wow. Of, you know, so... Like For where you were staying, hmm? like the place you were staying, 12 people were killed? No, not, well, oh, the village. The, the village, village. oh, yeah. I was like, damn, you were like in a house and 12 people died below you? Uh, no, okay. Uh, 
below me would be awful if I had to like <laughs> you like like live with that as like one. oh man yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one upstairs for a glass of water or something yeah <laughs> um no like yeah 12 other people died because like most people live on the first floor and sleep on the first floor you know yeah. Um, I was one of the lucky ones that was living in some rich person's house and they stuffed the first floor with all their random shopping shit. Yeah. And, um, unfortunately for them, that was like, their two cars were, you know, drifted away and, um, yeah, I like had to spend the rest of my two months, like cleaning this flood, uh, like yeah. the remnants of his hoarder stuff versus like my gardening on a vineyard uh for my like life in france that was like settling after dropping out of college it was like okay you almost died from a flood now you have to <laughs> think about it for two months like i just had like podcasts downloaded and i would be like laughing and then like look around me and like feel really weird and then like yeah just keep going um it was weird, like, living in that town for the rest of the time because you would, like, drive around and, like, see a broom in a tree, you know, and just yeah. be like, whoa. A broom uh, in a tree, that's just, like, the devastation from the flood and stuff like that. Yeah, like, uh, you don't think about how everything gets moldy, mm -hmm. you know, and um, France has a lot of snails, so everything was covered in snails escargo uh, yeah and it was just like depressing oh i can you know? i could imagine <laughs> yeah. i can imagine like i know i've lived in the south and they have like have had tornadoes that have came through and just ripped mm -hmm. up places and just driving through there it's kind of surreal seeing stuff you know that once was there and you're just like wow that's not there no more and you're just the devastation in general that like what nature can do you know it's it's crazy to imagine that just like one second like the wildfires out here in california mm -hmm. like things like that things just yeah. keep progressively getting crazier in the world but you know that's the world we live in that's why we do so, comedy and podcasts <laughs> i guess the the bad choice was not picking paris or or something. <laughs> that, was, that was the poor life choice not going to Paris it's like I should have been I should have went to Paris and I should have never shit in that river that river's like I'll get you Bex <laughs> I'll get you for shitting in me oh well, I am glad that you did not die in a flood that is a, a very very interesting story so France, that what yeah. was uh what was France like? Was that a was that a good experience overall? Other than almost dying in a flood? Oh, it was fucking awesome. Um, so I took French for four years, um, so I could speak conversationally, mm -hmm. um, and that was just like a huge plus for respect and making friends, mm -hmm. especially because I was there for three months in the same place. Um, like being able to sit at a cafe with friends and like actually understand them is pretty important for like yeah day to day living and socializing like yeah. it would be pretty hard to live in a place where i would have to like tap someone's shoulder and be like what did they say what did they say you know yeah um and then after that i lived in spain and i'm completely fluent in spanish so uh -oh. that was really easy and really fun um, That's cool. But and then I was in Sweden in between that. That was oh. fucking weird. <laughs> like That's every, cool. it's like the most alphabetically jumbled language. You know, it's got like uh -huh. thirteen consonants in a row, and like, really? uh, yeah, it's like hordebobble, and then the other one's <laughs> zippabobble, and the other one's zippabloublub. <laughs> <laughs> they all just sound really ridiculous uh yeah it's uh i i would get off on the wrong like yeah station all the time like yeah it was pretty pretty hard um but it was cool yeah that's neat yeah. see that that's something i've yet to do i've yet to travel outside of the united states 
So really? that, yeah, that's something I definitely want to do. I want to, I would love nothing more. I'd, I'd want to go see Stonehenge or something like that. Even mm -hmm. like, you know, the pyramids, mm -hmm. just things like that, like really mm -hmm. old stuff. That's the type of stuff I would want to see, but mm -hmm. I have not taken the time to do that yet. Hopefully someday. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is like, like moving to California was one of like the coolest things I've ever done. Cause I was just like, you know, it's California. I'm from the South. It's like it's people a big always, step. yeah, yeah, it is. It's definitely a big step coming from ra being raised in a town that has 537 people to mm -hmm. a city that has 400,000 people. Yeah, it's a big jump, mm -hmm. but I love yeah. it. I mean, but, yeah. San Diego is like, I mean, my dad was in the Navy. He traveled and like mm -hmm. San Diego itself is a Navy port. Yeah. So just like people are from everywhere in San Diego. Yeah. And we live 10 minutes from the border. So just like, I never had a sense of like finite home you know san diego yeah. ever growing almost yeah. so it was just like natural to come up to the north and then just keep going yeah um, like the Nor norcal was a really nice s transition for me yeah um so that was my hard step was going half a state up <laughs> um, but yeah i don't know travel's fucking done now so what are we even talking about this way <laughs> <laughs> airplanes uh, are dead they're becoming taxi cabs oh yeah so, i bet it's really cheap to get a flight now though Air airlines are still going are they not uh, yeah I think I was, yeah, I know somebody that works really? there. I'm pretty sure they are. I'm pretty sure flights are still going in and out. They might not be as busy, but I'm pretty sure they're, you could still travel. I mean, it's probably to, not like, social, Is there like five seats because you have to social distance on the plane? I don't know. I don't know. That's very, very interesting, though. Let's uh, have to research like, that, maybe. <laughs> yeah, this plane economy has too many holes. <laughs> I know that I was uh I was honestly thinking about just checking the price of a ticket to see if it'd be affordable just to go back home and visit for the weekend or something uh, but I don't know I would only go back to visit I would never want to move back to the south I love California too much it's a uh, it's one of the most culturally diverse places I've lived I mean Sacramento mm -hmm. like you got everybody here that's what I love about it mm -hmm. To close it out, uh, is there anything that you've got going on that you want to share with anybody? Anything you want to promote? Um, I do some, like, silly videos. Okay. Um, I have, like, a YouTube channel. Okay. That's Lava. Uh, right. Find me on Instagram, Generic White Men. I mostly post the videos there. Okay. I do portrait photography if you need a headshot. Um, I work at the zoo, so... <laughs> Come find me there. And I'm starting to do bubble performances for kids' parties. Oh, wow. Like uh, Ali Ada. Yeah. She's going to yeah. help train Okay. Yeah. She's, she's going to train. That's awesome. Yeah, she's yeah. she's freaking awesome. I, I love those guys. The Invisible Disabilities Open Mic. I yeah. can't wait for things to come back and be able to do that mic again. I really want to get on their showcase. That showcase is one that I would mm -hmm. love to do. Allie was uh, in my clown burlesque show. Really? Yeah. That, I would have loved to see a clown burlesque show because right. I, like, I like clowns. Clowns are always fun. I kind of like the scary clowns, but <laughs> those are always fun. But, you know, yeah, clown burlesque. That sounds like a good time. Like, seriously. You, that, it again. you should. You should. You should do clown burlesque slash comedy show. That would be great. I would perform at it. If you ever really? put if you ever put that on, yes, I will even I will even dress like a clown if I have to. I'll paint my face like a clown. I don't care. It's not like I've never done it before. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna hold you to that. Hey, I'm uh I I'm not bullshit and I'll do it. It's recorded. It'll be on the internet. I'll do that. Virtu virtual handshake <laughs> all yep. right well this has been fun bex i have yep. very much enjoyed talking to you 
I think we're going to go ahead and say this is the end of the sixth episode of Is This a Podcast? I, I thank you so much for being on. I really enjoyed talking to you. Yeah. Yeah, that was, was fun. I like your yellow headphones. They've been nice to look at. Oh, thank you. <laughs>